hello students today we'll see the governing system governing systems used for ic engines so first of all we'll see what is mean by governor governor is mechanical device designed to control the speed of engine within specified limit so here we are going to control the engine speed and that's why its application is for the stationary engines or in case of some tractors so governors are used in stationary engines for maintaining a nearly constant speed of engine under different load conditions like no load or full load or partial load and protecting the engine and attached equipments against high speed when the load is removed or reduced so when load changes then also governor should ensure the constant speed of the engine it should not allow the increase of speed or decrease of speed so there are different types of governors that we are going to see the first one is centrifugal governor pneumatic governor and hydraulic governor here you can see the classification of centrifugal governors mainly the centrifugal governors are used for maintaining a speed of ic engine centrifugal governors are mainly classified into two types pendulum type and loaded type in pendulum type we will see the watt governor and in loaded type there are two types of loading dead weight loading and spring controlled governors in dead weight we have porter and proel governors and in spring loaded we have hartnell hartnell wilson hartnell and pickering type of governor so one by one we'll see this picture shows the centrifugal governor so here you can see the generalized arrangement of centrifugal governor and how it is connected to the throttle wall so that it can control the fuel supply to the ic engine centrifugal governors are based on balancing of centrifugal force on the rotating balls by an equal and opposite radial force known as controlling force it consists of two balls of equal mass which are attached to the arms these balls are known as fly balls the fly balls revolve with a spindle which is driven by the engine through bevel gears the upper ends of the arms are provided to the spindle so that the balls may rise up or fall down as they revolve about the vertical axis and according to the speed the arms are connected by the links to a sleeve which is keyed to the spindle the sleeve revolves with the spindle but can slide up and down the balls and sleeve rises when spindle speed increases and falls when speed decreases in order to limit the travel of sleeve in upward and downward directions two stops s are provided on the spindle the sleeve is connected by a bell crank lever to a throttle wall the supply of working fluid decreases when the sleeve rises and increases when it falls the next is watt governor so we'll see one by one types of centrifugal governor so watt governor is the simplest form of the centrifugal governor conical pendulum with links attached to a sleeve of negligible mass the watt governor may be connected to the spindle in following three ways pivot p may be on the spindle axis like as shown in the first diagram the pivot p may be offset from the spindle axis and the arm when produced intersect at o as shown in second diagram 
and the pivot P may be offset but the arms cross the axis at O as shown in the third diagram. The next type of centrifugal governor is the Porter governor. The Porter governor is a modification of Watts governor with central load attached to the sleeve. The load moves up and down on central spindle as per the speed variation. This additional downward force increases the speed of revolution which is required to enable the balls to move to any predetermined level. Next type is Proel Governor. Proel Governor has the balls fixed at B and C to the extension of the links DF and EG. The arms FP and GQ are pivoted at P and Q respectively. By this change, it requires fly ball of less mass for same action. The central load moves up and down on the central spindle. This additional downward force increases the speed of revolution which is required to enable the balls to move to any predetermined level. And due to these movements of balls, finally in all these type of governors, you need to understand this up and down movement is somehow connected to the fuel supply and fuel supply can be varied to maintain a constant speed. We need more fuel when there is a load is high and less fuel when there is a less load. So this fuel supply can be maintained with the help of this. The next type of centrifugal governor is Hartnell governor. It is a spring loaded type. It consists of two bell crank levers provided at the points OO to the frame. The frame is attached to the governor spindle and therefore rotates with it. Each lever carries a ball at the end of the vertical arm OB and a roller at the end of the horizontal. A helical compressive spring provides equal downward force on the two rollers through a collar on the sleeve. It serves the purpose like deadweight load with the help of spring. The spring force may be adjusted by screwing a nut up or down on the sleeve. The next type of governor is Horton governor. Here vertical arms of bell crank lever is attached with spring ball which compress against the frame of governor. The additional force against the centrifugal force increases the speed of revolution which is required to enable the balls to move to any predetermined level. Next type of governor is Wilson Hartnell governor. In this balls are connected by a spring in tension. An auxiliary spring is attached to the sleeve mechanism through a lever by means of which the equilibrium speed for a given radius may be adjusted. The main spring may be considered of two equal parts, each belonging to both the balls. Here we have completed the types of centrifugal governors. Now we will see some terminologies related to governor. First one is the governor regulation. The governor is fitted on an engine for maintaining a constant speed. Even then, some variation in speed is observed at full load and no load condition. At full load, maybe speed is decreased or at no load, maybe speed is increased drastically. This is called as speed drop. It is the variation in the engine speed between full load and no load condition. So it is usually expressed as a percentage of rated speed. So here you can see the formula for finding the governor regulation in percentage. 
where n1 is the speed at no load and n2 is speed at full load. Theoretically, governors are used to maintain a constant speed of engine, but this n1 and n2 have some difference because the speed is increased at no load and speed is decreased at full load. The next is governor hunting. So we can say it is nothing but the malfunction of the governor. Governor hunting is the erratic variation of the speed of the governor when it overcompensates for the speed changes or in other words you can see if the governor is too sensitive. When the governor produces a periodic effect on the engine speed like too fast or then too slow then too fast and so on it is a sign of governor hunting means if the speed is increased governor tries to decrease the speed so it decreases it much below the predetermined level then again governor try to increase it then again it is increased too much then again governor try to decrease it so this is governor hunting in such cases it is observed that when the engine speeds up quickly the governor suddenly responds the speed drops quickly the governor again responds and this process is repeated continuously and it will go in a loop the reason for governor hunting may be due to incorrect adjustment of fuel pump or carburetor or improper adjustment of the idling screw and excessive friction Hunting may be due to governor being too steep or due to some obstruction in free movement of governor components. So governing in IC engines. Governing is the process of varying the fuel supply according to the load to run the engine practically at constant speed. The device used for achieving this is known as governor. We have studied the different types of governors. The methods of governing for internal combustion engines are as follows. The governors used we have already studied. Now we will see the methods used for governing or we can call it as governing systems. First quantity governing, quality governing, combined quantity and quality governing and last one is heat and miss governing so one by one we'll see all this what is meant by quantity governing so here you can see the throttle wall that can be moved with the help of governors in this method the quantity or air fuel mixture entering into the engine cylinder is varied the composition of the mixture remains constant when the load varies means air fuel ratio is constant we are just varying the quantity with the help of governor by throttle wall in petrol engines the control is obtained by means of throttle wall in the carburetor in automobiles the throttle wall is operated by the accelerator paddle through links in gas engines the lift of the inlet wall is reduced and thus the quantity of air fuel mixture entering the engine cylinder is varied. Next is quality governing. In quality governing, the composition of air fuel mixture is changed. The composition is changed by admitting more or less fuel according to the variation in load. The air flow rate remains same, it will not get changed. We can change only the fuel supply the variation in fuel is obtained by either altering the effective stroke of the fuel injection pump in case of CI engine it is done by changing the angular position of helical groove of the pump plunger already we have studied the fuel pumps so you can get the idea how we can do this next by bypassing a part of fuel to the reservoir again so that only partial amount of fuel is sent and third dealing the closure of suction wall 
of the fuel injection pump. Quality governing is widely adopted in high speed diesel engines. The next is the combined quality and quantity governing. This system makes use of quantity as well as quality governing as name suggests. Both the quantity and quality of mixture are varied and this system is flexible and economical also. The next and final one is the heat and misgoverning. In this method, an explosion is omitted when the speed increases above the normal speed. Means we are missing the power stroke. That is one power stroke is missed. If no power stroke, no power generation. The charge is of normal strain and it is not valid. The centrifugal governor closes the inlet wall in the case of gas engines. In diesel engines, the governor makes the fuel pump out of action. No fuel will be supplied and hence there is a no power stroke. So somehow governor need to stop the power stroke by closing the inlet wall or by no fuel supplied in the fuel injection. Heat and misgoverning used in small gas engines. It consists of cam, rocker, roller, picker, picker block, a lever that connects picker block to governor. The wall is seated in its seat by the spring force. So the same you can see here also. During normal running, the cam on the camshaft is rotated by the engine. It operates the rocker arm through the cam roller. The rocker carries a picker. The picker strikes the picker block. The picker block lifts, that means it gets open. The wall against the spring forces, the wall is opened once in two revolution of the crankshaft. This is during the normal running. Now when the speed exceeds the normal, we need to decrease the speed. So what happens to decrease the speed? We need to miss the power stroke. So the governor weights fly further outward due to increased speed. The sleeve of the governor rises up due to ball goes away. The picker block is slightly lifted by the lever. Now the picker is unable to hit the picker block thus opening of the inlet valve is missed this inlet valve will not get open in the case of oil engines this governor operates the plunger of the fuel pump to stop the supply of fuel so there is no supply no power stroke so here we have completed the governing systems so these are the four governing systems you need to remember and to do this governing, we need governors. So we have also studied different types of governors also. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.